Okay. So last time we analyzed, we, we derived uh, the old summer field equation whose eigen solutions are the TS waves. Some of the TS waves grow, some of the TS waves decay. And by growing and decaying, I mean, as you travel in the downstream direction, do you expect the waves to become bigger and bigger or you expect the waves to become smaller and smaller? You can, and the, the oh, sum of the old equation is parameterized by three non-dimensional parameters. One is Re theta, right, the viscosity, non-dimensionalized by the local length scales of the boundary layer. The second, the second is the frequency, right? The, the temporal frequency of this oscillation. Different oscillations that oscillates at different frequencies in, the, in time decay or grow at different rates. When you solve the old summer field equation, you fix a particular frequency and look at the eigenvalues in the spatial evolving direction. Okay, so this is the second parameter. The third parameter is H, the shape of the boundary layer. Of course, you can introduce arbitrarily many parameters to characterize the shape, but here we are just taking the Faulkner scan family of solutions uh, that is parameterized by a single parameter H. So with these three parameters, we can solve the Osamafold equation and sweep over the parameters to find out First of all, what shape are these perturbations? And two, or more importantly, is how fast do they grow or decay? For example, for the uh, a flat plate boundary layer, H equal to 2.6, we identified only a narrow region in which the waves can grow. Okay. And if you have an even smaller H, the region for H it'll grow is even smaller, and it happens it can only happen at even higher R E theta. Okay, and uh, uh, so imagine imagine you have a boundary layer where there are all kinds of small disturbances. So imagine, like, because we don't know what kind of disturbances are there, let's imagine we have a boundary layer with all kinds of disturbances, a white noise. So white noise means there are, uh, there are just a, a infinitely many frequencies imposed on the boundary layer. And each frequency, the, the, the meaning of white means each frequency has equal amount of energy as any other frequency same as a white light, right? Okay, so if that is the case, then you have infinitely many omegas, right? So let's do a small study of, for each different temporal frequency, how, what is the evolution path of the corresponding TS wave, all right? Okay. So let's say, um, so let's pick a particular omega, and let's imagine we start from the leading edge of a boundary layer of a, of a self-similar solution. So in this case, it's the Blasius boundary layer. Starting from the leading edge, pick a frequency, and let's progress downstream. As we progress downstream, how does my amplification factor, right, so AI is my amplification factor, move as I progress downstream? Would it move at all in this graph? Uh, theta would increase. Theta would increase. That's a critical observation, right? So for Blasius, UE is fixed. So UE is constant, but theta is going to increase. How about RE theta? Linear. RE theta is linear to theta. So that means for a fixed frequency, um, as I travel 
downstream, what, an, what kind of line should I plot in this graph? It's a linear, right? So a linear slope in this logarithmic space is basically a line, any line of slope one. So for example, for a high frequency oscillation, I would be tracing such a line. Okay, so if this is the frequency I'm looking at, um, that be high right, so anything that is upward is higher frequency, right? So because the y-axis is the frequency, it's non-dimensionalized frequency, right? Okay, so a line closer to the top corresponds to a higher frequency. Actually, you can calculate exactly what it is because Re theta is just a... Uh, uh, Re theta is da, 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 Ue theta divided by nu, right? So uh, that frequency is basically, it's going to be uh, non-dimensionalized by Ue squared divided by nu, right? It's equal to, uh, this is equal to 0 0.1 times, uh, is equal to 0 0.1 times Ue squared divided by nu. So that's the frequency of this line okay so along this line so if my omega corresponds to this line what does it do does it grow or decay as I travel uh, downstream it always decays right so there is no region over here that sees any growth of that particular frequency so that frequency you can safely say that it wouldn't ever exist in the boundary layer. All right. Okay. How about this one? It doesn't exist. All right. How about this one? It doesn't exist. So, what is the first interesting frequency you're going to see? The one that goes tangent to the peak, right? Okay. So, this is the first interesting frequency, but do I expect to observe it in the boundary layer? Still no, because there is only one place it can grow at zero rate. So still it always decays. But this is interesting because as soon as I go above that, for that frequency, slightly below that, I mean, it now sees a narrow region of growth. All right. And, and that happens at which location on the boundary layer? So where is the first location on the boundary layer that can support any growth of small disturbances? Uh, 